Hi there guys, as you can see here we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Cooking is probably the last thing you'd expect to see on a channel dedicated to shooting. But today I put my rifle away because I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make a pigeon pie. This is definitely one of the more complicated recipes out there, but it's also by far the tastiest. And if you're going to go through the trouble of de-breasting all of these birds, then you might as well go all out. This particular recipe is called Medieval Pigeon Pie. It's a more traditional recipe, and to make it, you're going to need a number of ingredients, including breast meat from six pigeons, one tablespoon of tomato paste, two beef stock cubes, a roll of puff pastry, a pinch of rosemary, sage, and thyme, olive oil, four to five tablespoons of flour, mushrooms, half an onion, and an egg. We're going to start off with the breasts, and these have been separated from the bone on either side, so there are two pieces per bird. We're going to be stir frying this meat, so the first thing you'll need to do is to cut each breast up into thinner slices. Okay, so now that we've moved over to the stove, we're going to begin to prepare the filling. Once you've got all your pieces, chuck them in a pan with one tablespoon of olive oil, set the thermostat to somewhere halfway, and stir fry until the meat is lightly browned. You can then place the meat somewhere separate and start on your onions and mushrooms. There should be some brown liquid left in the pan from the meat. Now this is the good stuff, you want to keep this. You can throw your onions in the pan and fry them until they're translucent and a little brown. And then you can add the sliced mushrooms. Mushrooms are optional, but I personally think that they make the filling just a little bit more interesting. The next step is to make the gravy itself. And you can begin by adding four to five tablespoons of flour to a cup of hot water. But you can't just add it straight because the hot water cooks the flour and you get lumps. You have to make a paste with the cold water first and then add the hot water. Pour this into the pan and on a low temperature, let this simmer while adding your tomato paste, stock cubes and herbs. I usually use two beef stock cubes, one tablespoon of tomato paste and a pinch of each herb adds that traditional old school taste. So that's your filling done. You can now mix everything together and shift your focus to the pie crust. That smells really, really good. Yeah. This part probably doesn't need much explaining, so I'll skim through it as quickly as possible. You line the bottom of your dish with pastry, add the filling, add your top crust, and if you're really into it, you can do a bit of pastry art. A handy little trick I learned is to beat an egg, add a little water, and just lightly brush the crust with the mixture. This will give your pastry that shiny, glazed look. Okay, we're almost done. There's just one more step, and that's to get this baby in the oven. We just need 30 minutes or so, and then we'll be as happy as pie. So, the pie's all done. Now for the best part, we're going to eat this baby. So invite your family over, invite some friends, and dig in. Until next time, I'll see you guys on Air Arms Hunting South Africa. Oh, I'm so excited right now. Having the mindset of always eating what you shoot is great. But unless you know how to properly prepare a meal using the meat from that animal, living by the rules can be quite difficult. Having a great recipe like this provides you with a bit of incentive and makes every minute spent de-breasting and cleaning each bird well worth it.